After Tesla announced it will construct a gigafactory in Shanghai, China, Hengqi unveiled six new electric cars. This brand belongs to Evergrande China, an ambitious Chinese company which had no prior experience in making cars, and is actually a real estate company that claimed to be the number one in the universe. The company is also a hot topic in China now because its commercial acceptance bills have matured, but many people were not paid and are having difficulty getting paid back, meaning that the monster company, which has total assets of more than 2.2 trillion RMB, or US 314.6 billion, has defaulted. As more and more people are unable to redeem their payment, the Chinese authorities have also been deleting related messages on the internet. It is important to know that until 2019, Microsoft's total assets was only 287 billion USD. Apple's total assets were 338 billion USD. But this enterprise from China that many people in the world have never heard of actually has 315 billion USD of assets. According to Evergrande's 2019 annual report, disclosed on April 28th, Evergrande now has more than 900 companies in China, ranging from property groups, health groups, travel groups, new energy vehicles, and soccer clubs. While a company's total assets equal total equity and liabilities, Evergrande's liabilities were US$264 billion, which means a debt ratio of nearly 84%, surpassing Volkswagen, the number one overseas debtor. In addition, these assets also include a large amount of inventory, that is, the real estate or merchandise that has not been sold. Until June 2019, Evergrande's inventory size was $170 billion and continued to increase until now. In other words, most of Evergrande's assets are actually its inventory and liabilities. Whether in China or overseas, only banks or companies with very high credit ratings can issue commercial acceptance bills instead of cash. Although Evergrande is heavily indebted, it is one of the few companies in China that can issue commercial acceptance bills. It allows the company to tap into the capital upstream suppliers, which is the equivalent of an interest-free loan. This is the secret of Evergrande's enormous business empire. From 2014, Evergrande's total amount of acceptance bills issued has increased from 3.24 billion USD to 28.6 billion USD in 2020. Its share of the entire commercial acceptance bill market is more than a tenth of the total Chinese market. Evergrande has been able to issue acceptance bills to stay afloat despite such heavy debt because its top executives are unable to be shaken, all thanks to help from the Chinese authorities. Evergrande's founder and chairman of the board, Hu Kaiyan, was ranked 10th on the 2016 Who Run 100 Richest list and is a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, China's top political advisory board, and is secretary of the company's CCP Party Branch Committee. <laughs> Such an extensive government background makes Evergrande one of the companies favored by the authorities. These enterprises are ostensibly private enterprises, but in reality, they are managed by people with a Chinese Communist Party background and operate according to the party's political direction, often winning unfairly in business competition, beating other small private enterprises and concentrating the public's wealth into the center of the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, there are quite a few such enterprises, another example being Hainan Airline, or HNA. At its peak, HNA had assets of US $229 billion and debts of over US $107 billion. In order to fill the debt, HNA began in 2010 to try to raise funds from employees, providing 13% of the trust products held by the union. The investment threshold was also very low. Many of the employees have put their money in, but so far have not recovered the funds. In 2018, H&A Group, Wanda Group, Anbang Insurance, and another four companies that have billions of dollars in assets, took advantage of outbound guarantee and made a big push in overseas mergers and acquisitions, taking over a large number of overseas companies, assets, and land. For instance, Wanda Group has entered Hollywood acquiring AMC cinemas and legendary entertainment, funding many movies and bringing Chinese ideology and merchandising to Hollywood. Ha! <laughs> 
H&A &A Group's overseas acquisitions in 2016 alone amounted to US $20 billion, including stakes in Hilton Hotels, as well as Ingram Micro, a major US home appliance distributor, in control of 9.9% of Deutsche Bank, for more than $3 billion, making it the bank's largest shareholder. Folsom's acquisitions have been wide-ranging, including real estate, finance, pharmaceuticals, steel, entertainment, as well as the purchase of Germany's Hawk and Offhauser Bank and Canada's Cirque du Soleil, while Anbang's overseas acquisitions from 2015 to 2017 exceeded US $30 billion. Chinese companies' overseas acquisitions peaked in 2016. According to auditing firm PwC, Chinese companies invested as much as US $221 billion overseas in 2016, a huge 246% increase from the previous year. Since these companies had limited credibility overseas, they rely heavily on Chinese banks for financing. In late 2018, several banks in mainland China stopped financing these companies due to excessive debts and high risks causing a liquidity crisis, and they were forced to sell some of their assets to repay their debts. In addition, these companies have also been involved in a number of illegal acquisitions overseas. In March 2015, Australia's treasurer signed an order ordering the company of Hu Kaiyan, chairman of the Evergrande Real Estate Group, to sell the Villa de Mar, a seaside luxury property purchased in 2014 by Golden Fast Foods, a subsidiary of the Hong Kong-listed Evergrande Real Estate within 90 days. It was bought illegally through a series of shell companies registered in Australia, Hong Kong, China, and the British Virgin Islands. Castor Peng, the director of research at Core Pacific Yamaichi HK, a Hong Kong-based financial investment firm, told Bloomberg in 2017 that, The most important factor in doing business in China is a company's political stance. It is very important for companies to be on the right side. If normal market rules were in place, such aggressively indebted companies would have gone bankrupt and restructured a long time ago. But these Chinese monster companies are still alive and well today, with no consequences yet, even though the public debt and public bond markets have defaulted and delayed their payments. This is also due to China's different market system, one that is not compatible with the free market.